All right, we're here in sunny central Florida, and I'm really excited to be with two friends of mine, John Kimber, John Travis Morton, two growers that I think are really influential for the marketplace, even if you haven't heard about them or noticed them, they've been kind of behind the scenes growing and um, fueling the fire that is Jabuticaba love. These guys have the love for it, they're doing it right, and I want to introduce you. First, we're going to start with who I call the godfather of Jabuticaba. In a lot of ways, I feel like it had been kind of forgotten or, or, or you know, neglected and set to the side and, and you cared for it and you had some varieties that no one else did and you've been doing it so long. I'm just really curious, what got you started in this? I mean, I know it's like a, you know, putting you on the spot or whatever, but what do you kind of Kind of what do you remember? Well, my father always liked to grow plants. Yes. And so I took back from my father. Uh, I worked for Publix and retired. And a customer come in the store with this fruit in his hand. And I said, what the heck is that? And he said, I said, are those grapes? And he said, no, but they taste like grapes. And I said, well, that's interesting. He, he told me what they were. He said, Jabata Kaba. And I'm saying, I couldn't hardly pronounce it. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, here, try one. So I, he said, it's got a hard skin, don't eat the seed and the skin unless you want to. And I tasted it and right away, I got hooked. What year would you say it brought? It was back in 1966, wow. 65, 66. And he had a whole bunch of that fruit in a bucket. And he says, I wonder if the produce manager can sell this. Well, I called the produce manager up. I was second, a third assistant, in, a second assistant in that operation and I got the produce manager out and back in those days we could buy local produce today you can't do that they go through a home office so I said uh, his name was Jim Drake he said Jim try one he tried one and this guy's name was Mr. Smith and he lived on the corner of Yale and College Park and he had a he had a picture of a Jabata Kaba tree quite large with a native standing by it it looked like an oak I was that big. So uh, anyway, so he said, well, try these in your produce. It was about 20 pounds and see how you do. So her, uh, so Jim Drake put them in little hot packages and put them out there. We gave him 50 cents a pound. So we paid him. We sold them for 99 cents a pound and they sold in one day. And so we called the guy up and asked him if he had any more. He says, well, I, I've got more. So he brought more. So that's when we established a market for Jabata Kaba in a store, a grocery store. So uh, later on, about three or four months later, he brought us another little crop. And we said, gosh, what's happening? He says, oh, this has several crops a year. And that's what really got me. So I took some of the fruit that he gave me. My dad planted the seed. So my dad really was the one that started me with these Jabata Kaba. Did, did your dad have a nursery? No, he, okay. he did. He, over the years, he, he, he budded citrus trees. Gotcha. He was in the growing. And uh, so he grew them in, in three gallon buckets and he put all the seeds in there and a bunch of them would come up. It takes probably five or six weeks. And he'd let them grow to where they were a year or two old and he'd separate them, I would. And a lot of the original trees I have still came from my father and they're almost 50 years old right now. And you'll see some of these as we go around through the garden. But uh, that's how I got started. And over the years, it's a kind of fruit that you just get so excited about. You want to get other varieties and it's nothing to grow. It's so easy, it's underused in our area. We're in a central Florida and we have, like I say, two or three crops a year, depending on the weather. They like rain, they don't like the hot, they, fall, they fruit in the fall. So uh, since then, my uncle, we planted a couple of trees at his place about 35 years. Jim? Uncle, Jim, Uncle Jim, same last name, John Kimber. Anyway, he had trees that he took care of. They got quite large and they would fruit an average of about 150 to 100 pounds of fruit annually. And we took that fruit to Clements Produce, which are in the operation today. Doug runs the produce and traded for produce. Doug had a high demand for that Jabata Kaba fruit. Since then, I don't think it's available through any market. 
the fruit doesn't hold up good to ship. Okay, if you can go back, John, in your memory to you were talking about that the guy that worked for the USDA, right? That introduced the tree exactly. and you got the seeds from. You said the original tree was like what, 30 feet tall? I would say it just I know pretty much on height. And this is a central Florida here in town? College Park. College Park. Okay. On a corner. Okay. And the tree was about all it was pretty thick. It was about 30 foot tall. He had to have a ladder to pick the fruit. And he said it had a shape almost like It a had pine. a shape like a Norfolk Island pine. Yeah. I've got bigger trees and they just don't have that shape that I remember in my mind. Anyway, he picked that fruit and we'd do it for a couple of years. It wasn't just the first time. We built a little, built uh, people around it and they were waiting for him. They'd call the store, want to know when the guy's going to bring some jabata cabas. Well, you don't know exactly when they're going to be ready. It takes about six weeks from bloom. So anyway, over the years, he would he tried to sell some to Goodings Market here in Maitland, and they sold a few. And then he got sick, and he passed away. Well, before he passed away, we had a hard freeze, and it was probably around 1980, 81. And that's when we had like 18, 20 degrees. Well, it got hit. It'd take 25. Mine's taken 25, but it froze. And he had to cut it down. And he had a small one in the backyard that was affected. He came to me, and I gave him another tree. Oh, really? Before he passed. From the ones that you from, were... From here. show these off these are some trees that john has been growing and they're in four inch pots if you look down at the base here they're about four and a half five feet tall these are regular sabaras and there's some uh, red jabuticabas mixed in but these are rooted into the ground if you don't move them around they'll grow into the ground i can't pull that out so these are all well some of them not as bad as others but um you can dig them out of the ground and put them in a big pot you know or whatever they're fine just as they are but come take a look over here he's got planted together reds and sabaras and here's the red same size same age but let's go down to the bottom over here if you track this tree all the way down to the base one of these here where's it at there it is look it's flowering flowers on it in a four inch pot see the flowers on along the side here and it's grown into the ground but we could dig that out and you know take it out of here but just wanted to show you that came this up. is the seedling that just came up volunteers on yes. yeah so this is like what about six seven feet tall eight yeah. years old or something like that I'd say it's about eight. It's has it flowered yet or anything not yet okay but there's one here there's a brother of it over here you got katook in the ground here huh yep. katook adam will do these uh, peanut butter later. i got one, oh, one some really beautiful trees here just regular sabra wow, bonsai pot check that out this is yeah that's the one i want to show you look at the, the roots on that i want you to lift it out and show, show them okay did it come right out? Look at that. A little worm hanging there for you. Isn't that crazy? I got dirt in my mouth. <laughs> I'd say that's probably getting old enough to fruit. Yeah. It's a bonsai I made to let go. Beautiful. Okay. And, uh, um. That Adam is about. Um, I'd say it's 50 years old. About 50 years old. And it's in a wash tub. And it's wash tub and there's no roots in the ground. That's the most important. In other words. But I see if you could show that wash tub. I guess it's hard to see, but. You can probably see. People it. really want to see what's underneath the hood. You can't, <laughs> you can't get it out of the hood. Oh, there, there you go. go. Golly, man, it's like, it's, it's like my leg. Show the tree behind it, too. Look how freaking giant the, sorry. And then, like, I don't know if you can, like, come like this and kind of show, like, yeah, because you see the tree here. The Jabuticaba, and then look all the way up, it's growing on the roots of that freaking tree. 
That's incredible. I don't know if you want to like come back the way you were again and like just show like the enormity of the tree. I'll get in here with it. size yeah it is and it, it was this a volunteer as well or did you plant it here you know what that was what that tree I gave to my son uh, about 35 years ago yeah and the tree I gave it to my son 35 years ago and he didn't have room for it yep that 80 freeze yep that we had 89 it well one of them yeah it froze but it 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 froze. He lives in Lockhart, his little colder zone. And he said, Dad, you want this back? And I said, yes. It had a little green at the bottom. Repoed it. So I repoed it, put it right here where it's at, and uh, cut the dead off. I left it for a long time. And, and a lot of branches come out from the bottom. And I just gave it a chance. And then my friend Adam that uh, says, you need to get all that growth cut off the bottom and just leave a few. Well, he was right. If I left it like it was, it had been a big bush and I couldn't get in there to pick the fruit. Oh, so you pruned right? it. So I pruned it back when I met Adam about 10 years ago. And now it's made a nice tree, it's easy to pick, and, and it's putting out a really nice fruit. They seem to be a little bit larger. It depends on the tree. I've had trees put out small fruits and I have trees put out consistently larger fruits. So they vary a little bit and I think it has a lot to do with the ground. And uh, that's why it's what it is right now. It's let's let's see that one. About forty years old. This is an interesting story. So the gremel is a little more sensitive to saturated roots. I mean, it can take it, but it seems to like that dry. And the gremel also will get rust on the leaves, like in Hawaii or even Florida. If we have a ton of rain, you'll get rust on the fruits and the leaves. So it likes the wet but dry, you know, good drainage. But John, you were saying? Yeah, I was saying that in uh, in pots sometimes, if uh, if the worms get into them, they'll make it real swampy and you end up suffocating the roots. So if you've got one and it's in a pot and you find that it's starting to get swampy or you find that it's starting to decline, uh, a lot of times you dig it out of the pot and you figure it out that it's just worms have gotten in there and uh, change, the soil. change the soil out, get it a little bit better draining, add something in to, to up your drainage. And uh, I think if you can keep the soil a little more acidic, the worms don't like it as much. Yeah. And that seems to really uh, do the trick for it. Yeah, fertilizing seems to help too. Oh, they, they hate they hate fertilizer. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, this is a grimmel right here in the ground, and um, I believe this is the source for all my grimmels. John got a tree of Adolf from Adolf Grimmel indirectly. Do you remember where you got oh, them? You put them in yeah, room. put that there naturally. Do you, do you remember where you got your original yeah, I grimmels? Got mine down at Bonita Springs, down near um, Bonita Springs, down down toward on the west coast. But you don't remember the particular nursery? I don't, but I think it might still be there. And so you just picked it up because it looked different. It was about thirty, about thirty-five years ago. Yeah, I saw it in their nursery, and they had the regular, I call regular Jamata Kaba, the Sabra. Sabra, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and they had big Sabras and big box, yeah. big tubs. And I uh, asked the guy about them. He said he thought it was different because the leaf was bigger. So I bought two. Good and, choice. And they were probably around fifteen, twenty dollars. <laughs> And uh, this was 35 years. How big were they? How big were they? They were only about three or four foot tall. Only three or four foot tall. In a three tall. gallon bucket. <laughs> For years, I kept them in that three gallon bucket. And they seemed to grow, but they were okay. Kept them watered regularly. And I finally put them up in a bigger pot and they started showing growth. And I would say at the time, they were probably three or four years old. So when they started fruiting, they fruited just small, um, just a few fruits. And I noticed they grew pretty good, like almost like your regular one. And the suckers got really big, size of almost a, bigger than a quarter, almost a half a dollar. And uh, there would be only four or five on there. And I first ate one of them. Oh my gosh, they're much sweeter. The peel's much thicker. Uh, they have seeds in them. And I started planting the seeds. And uh, I enjoyed them. I had two trees. And then when I met Adam, he come over one day and I showed him and he says he's never seen one like that. And I happened to have fruit. I gave him a fruit and there were just a few on it. And uh, he said, my, I like these. So I guess he studied them or whatever and found out pretty much what they were. And I had a bunch of gallon size uh, in the back that were at least 10 years old and they weren't growing much. They were stunted. 
and I just put them in three gallons. And there was about 20, was there 20 or so? There was about, yeah, 20, and you hooked me up, man. I still have them to this day. I know. And they're really good. They're probably the best overall. That's my favorite, yeah. But it doesn't, yep. it doesn't fruit as much. No, it doesn't. Now, the mm -hmm. one I give Robert, I gave a, a nurseryman one as a free plant, and he grew that thing up to where it was fruiting much more than mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sold it and bought it back because the guy couldn't pick it up. And that was history. And the final sale of that tree that he had, $700. It was like a 15 gallon, or no. It was a big one. But now here's the moral of the story here. Yeah. With these trees, John, me, John Kimber at least, and, and I share a certain um, strategy. That is, we like to leave stuff in a small pot as long as we can because it's less labor, less time and money to go putting everything up and always fertilizing. Well, we can keep a tree smaller, longer, and maybe it doesn't fruit as fast, but we've saved on the labor and kept the tree alive and we can still, you know, pass it along or move it around if we need to. But now this other guy named Robert, John's friend, my friend, he used to grow these things two, three times as fast because he'd always step them up immediately and he'd always be hitting them with just the right amount of fertilizer. So it's kind of up to you as far as your strategy is what you want to do with that. Um, I personally am somewhere in between. Some of the trees I like to push them along as fast as I can. Some I like to leave them in a pot and get them as big as I can in that small pot. So. Grimmel, one of the best varieties. And John Kimber here is really responsible Ooh. for saving that, resurrecting that, and you know, bringing it to me. I couldn't find it anywhere else. And if it wasn't for him having those trees, you probably wouldn't have the tree. Yeah. Okay, just want you to see the size on this tree. It's probably about 20 years old by now, but he's kept it in a pot for a long time, which restricted the growth. We're a little colder here than it normally would be in its natural habitat. But the tree has now just recently been planted about two years ago. It, it suffered a lot of dieback from uh, drought in the container, but it's on the way back. It's coming back looking beautiful. You know, you might get some dieback on the branches, but as long as your old wood looks good and you got new growth coming out that looks good, you're doing good. It's a beautiful tree, one of the best. Red Jabuticaba, and you can see it's got some flowers there at the base. This thing fruits like crazy, but right now is kind of the slow time. The hottest part of the year, they take a break from fruiting. They, they were sorry, they really fruit the best during transitional times of the year. Yeah, just one or two at the bottom, but you can see it's about a seven foot tall tree. I just picked the fruit. Probably needs to go in a bigger pot, but I just wanted to show that off a really beautiful Precoce Red Jabuticaba. Grafted trunk of flora. About ready to fruit. I gotta get that in another pot. Oh, yeah. And then I'll, I'll show you the top of like the canopy when you come back. Like I'll lean it down. Beautiful. Okay, and then I'll step back here. And look at the top of it. Yeah, just like the whole canopy. I think we're good. Are we good on that one? Yeah, Vexator, Blue, Java, Java. Yeah. It's sharing a container with the papaya. That's fruiting. Yeah, there's the trunk down in there, and then this is a papaya. And then show them up the papaya, the nasty fruit on top. <laughs> kind of cool, I didn't even realize that. All right, we got about three more trees. And this is about fruiting size. I've seen them fruit smaller and faster, but uh, so it's not the regular trunk of flora. It's possible, most most likely a hybrid of trunk of flora and sabara. So uh, you want to show just the show the, that graft as the beautiful. base of it. That's you can see the graft. the graft is right. There's the rootstock. There's the line. There's the sign. Oh man, it's like an apple. Just like an apple. Okay, this, this, this has a story behind it. It's, it's a nice size. When I first met Adam, what, approximately, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, about. About 10, I think you were like 27 or 28. 8. 28. Don't tell people my age, though. I, mean, no, I won't now. But anyway, uh, this is a Sabra, and uh, it was 
in a seven and a half and it was about four or five foot tall fruiting so I'm saying it's probably guessing, guessing about 25 years old beautiful tree man. and I put it in another pot but something about this one because it's got so much shade now I haven't got a lot of fruit off of it yeah but it had size oh bigger bigger yeah. fruit yeah. this is a dream uh, Anona uh, introduced by Wayne Clifton it, rest in peace he just passed away um, the, you see the fruit on it here and uh, you know a lot of debate about this fruit a lot of people you know Wayne swears it's a cherimoya and then others are saying it's an atomoya but it's one of the best tasting fruits there's some up in there you see them there ever this guy he's got a lot of fruit on this tree and it's in the shade too usually they don't fruit so well in the shade but his is kind of shaded this is a yellow Jabba di Cava, Mircearia glazio viana. And the um, tree is beautiful, easy to grow. The fruit's uh, thick skin, big seed, but it has a delicious flavor. I think this one's worth collecting. So, he's got it in like a 15 gallon pot down there, I think. This here is Plinia coronata variety Heshtinga. Super rare tree, really excited about this one because it takes the heat it can take a little bit of salinity in the air and it makes a big fruit with a thin skin small seed it's productive it fruits several times a year just as much as sabra or more so we're really excited about this new variety of coronata and it fruits from seed in only about five to eight years instead of 15 to 20 years so this is a really cool tree that john has here on his property that I can propagate from. I have some of my own too, but it's just really nice to see growers like John with a tree like this. These Let's are see. of age to bloom. Does that come off? Are the roots coming yeah. through the bottom? No, no, they come off. They're coming through a little bit. There you go, try that. Just to show you, it's, you know, you could take a plant like this in a three gallon pot and put it right back in the same pot with more soil yeah. for another two years. That's so what, he's got it down halfway or less. That's what I've got to do. And this tree here is probably six, seven years old and they're fruiting now. I really appreciate you letting me come out and do this interview and I'm glad that we can kind of get what you have here on camera and preserve it for people to see for you know future generations. I think you really have made a really big impact and I'm, th I'm thankful for all you've done for me you know as far as introducing me to this and the varieties and the education you've given me is priceless and I'm, I'm just really happy to know you and thankful to know you and uh, i just cur curious if you have like a final thought or message that you want to well, leave with. Yeah, I do. I think that plant, this variety of plants are underused, especially in Central Florida. Uh, they can be grown in all states in containers, protected from the cold. You can bonsai this product, different varieties. I've been, I've been growing them for over 50 years, and I've learned a lot just on the job growing. Uh, I'm sure uh, when you start out with your small one and you think, oh, I can't live long enough to see it through. Well, you can. You have to plant it if you're going to get results. And I'm glad Adam come by. Anytime we can help people uh, better our world, we can do it through food, through trees, fruits. There's a lot here that people don't even know about. So I thank him and the, the gang for coming by. And if you want to get old of me, Adam has my number. Right now, I'm not set up for a lot of visitors. Yeah. And uh, appreciate everybody out there. So keep it growing. Good. Thank you, John. Keep, keep it, it growing. Really appreciate it. Thanks. All right.